anybody can go out there and play rock em, sock em, boxing, man. That means just throw wild, crazy punches. He's actually working behind his jab, working with his movement, doing exactly his distance. And, you know, um, that's right there is what I had to figure out and get to the point. I was taking those couple rounds where I had to figure out his movement. He was uh, kind of leaning to the left with his jab, and it was kind of awkward to me. But, you know, and that's what makes him a good fighter, those things and those those qualities about himself. But, you know, eventually, <laughs> like I said before the fight, eventually I was going to touch him, and he was going to have to really figure out what kind of fight he is. And, you know, like I said, anybody can, you know, fight hard, but he got off on the campus every time I dropped him to try to come back and win. That's what we were gonna, I was going to ask you next. The first knockdown, we thought it was over. The second knockdown, we thought it was over. What was going through your mind when you continued to get up, and then also later in the rounds when he was coming on? Yeah. The machine moved your thing. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, he's, he's not, he's not going to quit. He's just getting up every time I drop him, you know what I'm saying? He's getting right back up, and like, like I said, I never had a guy, like, out of 27 fights, every guy that I touch, they 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 became hurt. You know, and some of those guys got that will where they they want to last. And that's what he had. And you no, know, it was all about winning one round at a time. I knew I was comfortable, confident in my conditioning to do 12 rounds. And you know, it's about having that intelligence and not to let nothing you know deter you from where you was trying to go. And that's why I was keeping focus. You know, if he got back up, then I had to keep putting him down, or I had to keep winning, or you know, just take the fight for what it is. Um, have he ever hurt me? Well, he hit me with a punch in my neck. That joint hurt it. But, you know, like I, I, I try to share no pain. I try to show no pain at all. I try to show no flaw at all. I, I noticed that I was playing. I was fighting off the rope for a minute, and I think I'm usually confident with that, but I learned something. Don't be fighting off the ropes because, you know, he might hit me with something. Like he hit me with an uppercut, and, you know, I was like, man, I'm going to get off this rope right here. You know, fighting with the ring. Peter, great fight. Who you have on your radar? Who would you want next? Well, you know what? I'm on a lot of guys' menu right now, so it's not going to be a problem to get a fight. I got a hard-working team behind me. I got Al Heyman. I got Golden Boy. I got my management. You know, like, you know, that people say, oh, man, you got to fight for the glory. Well, I found out some glory don't pay your bills. So I, I'll fight anybody. I said I'll fight my own moms, and I still mean that. But now I got the middleweight champion. She might want to fight with me. <laughs> but the most important thing is that, like, when you got hard-working people, behind you that know the demographics with everything, um, I don't have to worry. All I got to do is go to the gym, prepare for the challenges that they come in front of me, and I face them, and you know what? I'm looking to be a victor every time I step out there. So whoever, you know, I'm not going to be disrespectful calling out the, calling out these fighters. I was calling out Sergio Martinez, and as you can see, that never happened. So I'm just going to be focused. I'm the only American middleweight rated right now, and like I'm, this is all a blessing I'm going to take. God's platform and be responsible with it and just be inspiring people.